welcome back to remote sensing applications using ArcGIS. This is the fifth of six mini projects you can choose from. And in this mini project, we're going to map coastal erosion along the Arctic coast of Alaska. So basically what you'll do is use a 1978 photograph and georeference that to the UTM coordinate system and then basically delineate the coastline from 1978 from that georeference photograph and then compare that with the coastline from 2013. So here's a satellite image from 2013 and this is the area that's been eroded between 1978 and 2013. So the first step will be to download the data using Earth Explorer website. Okay, so if you're a registered user, you can download data from this website. So if we go to data sets, what we want to do is download for 2013 Landsat 8 OLI sensor data. So Landsat Archive, Landsat 8 OLI, and then additional criteria. So we're interested in a path and row right along the Alaska border. So here's the Alaska-Canada border at longitude 141 west, and we're interested in the coastline in this location. So that's going to be path 69 and row 11. And then we want cloud cover less than 20% cloud cover. And then show us the results. So here is path 69 row 11, show me the footprint. So there's the footprint and it covers that coastline area. And show me a browse image. So here's our browse image. So then all we would do is download this Landsat 8 sensor image from the 6th of September 2013. And we would download the level one GeoTIFF product, and it's 837 megabytes. Okay, the next step will be to acquire aerial photography from the 1970s. So we'll specify our study area. We'll zoom in. We're interested in this coast from the U.S.-Canada border to demarcation point. So we'll zoom in until we get fairly well zoomed in. And then if we go to search criteria, use the map to define our study area. So now that's our study area, that location. And then we would go back to data sets, uncheck Landsat archive, and then we will go to aerial imagery, single photo frames. And then under additional criteria, we want color infrared photography. So if we scroll down, color infrared. And then the final thing is we specify the dates that we're interested in. So under search criteria, we want the 70s, and then we'll specify the months of July, August, and September. And then show us the results. Okay, so on the second page of our results, Here's demarcation point, so show me the footprint. So that's a little bit uh, too far to the west. And let's look at this one. So that covers exactly the area we're interested in. So that's this aerial photograph we want to order, and this is the entity ID number. So there's our entity ID number, and its scale is about at 1 to 62,000. So then we would simply order that single frame aerial photograph. So download as a register user. And I'll download it as a medium resolution product because our Landsat 8 sensor is 30 meter and 15 meter pixels. Okay, the first thing we'll do is use the Create Fishnet tool so we can see where that Alaska-Canada border is. So basically I'll call it border 141west.shp and I'll have the origin at negative 141.67 and 
and we'll go straight north. So negative 141, whatever you want to go straight north, 77. And we'll go, our cell width will be one degree. Our cell height, let's make our cell height three degrees. And then one row, one column, and then just OK. So that creates a polyline. So here it's at negative 141, 67 degrees. Here it's at negative 141, 70 degrees. OK, so we'll make a new data frame, and we'll insert into that new data frame our Landsat 8 OLI panchromatic band. OK, so the panchromatic band is band 8, and that will have 15 meter pixel size. So if we look at the properties, it does have 15 meter pixel size. And then if we go to symbology, we'll color zeros as transparent. OK, so then the Landsat 8 images are incorrectly defined as being in the southern hemisphere for some reason. So for example, here it's defined as being UTM zone 7 south, and it's really in UTM zone 7 north. So we'll run the project define tool or define projection tool to change that to 7 north. So our projection is UTM WGS84 northern hemisphere 7 north, and then OK. And then let's our, define our diff data frame that have the same coordinate system. So for our data frame, its coordinate system should be 7 north. UTM WGS84 northern hemisphere 7 north. OK, so then we'll put our border in this new data frame. And we never did define our border, so we'll need to run that define projection tool to define the coordinate system of our border. So we'll run that tool one more time. And our border is in geographic coordinates, WGS84. Our borders, geographic coordinates, WGS84, and then OK. So here's the line representing the Canada-US border at negative 141. OK, so to check, if you go to your data frame properties, tell it to display units in decimal degrees. And then if we point to this line, you can see it is at negative 141 degrees. So here's the area that we're interested in. The coastline change from this point basically to the Canada border. So now what we'll do is we'll add our aerial photograph from 1978 to our data frame and then geo-reference that aerial photograph to this Landsat OLI image, which is in the UTM coordinate system. Here's our aerial photograph. And then we could go back one frame, back one frame. There's our satellite image. So then we would just geo-reference this aerial photograph using points that are not on the coastline. So for example, if we zoom in, here's a road and a building. So we'll pick a point at the corner of that building pad. And then we would go back to our satellite image and find that same building and pick the corner of that pad. So that would be our first link. So basically develop enough links that you trust the georeferencing of your photo that it's as accurate as possible. And then you would go georeferencing rectify to create a new 
georeference raster from 1978 that will be in the UTM coordinate system. Okay, so I'm satisfied with my georeferencing model, so I'm going to rectify, so save as photo 1978 underscore UTM tiff. Okay, so here's my georeference photograph from 1978, and here's the Landsat 8 OLI satellite image from 2013. So I have good co-registration between these two images. So now what I'll do is define the coordinate system for my 1978 rectified photograph. So I use the define projection tool. Okay, so the next step will be to zoom in in our study area, and then we'll use the copy raster tool to cut out our aerial photograph from 1978 within this study area, within this zoomed area. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll cut out the Landsat OLI sensor bands within this view extent. So I use the copy raster tool and then I go to environments and then set my processing extent to be the same as display. And then I'll snap back to my rectified photograph and then just OK and OK. So now we have that photograph from 1978 in the UTM coordinate system, and it has the coastline and the area we're interested in from the Alaska-Canada border up to this demarcation point. So now we'll do the same thing, except we'll use the composite bands tool with our Landsat 8 OLI sensor images. So with Landsat 8 OLI, band 2 is the blue spectral region, band 3 is red, band 4, or band 3 is green, band 4 is red, and band 5 is a near infrared. So I'll put this as blue, green, red, near infrared from 2013, and then just OK. But before I do this, I'll go to environments and set my processing extent. So that will be the same as my demarcation point photo from 1978, which essentially was created from the same as display. And then I'll snap back to my Landsat 8 OLI raster. So this will be my snap raster, my near infrared raster. And then just OK. And if I want to make it appear as a color image, I would assign it the red band control the red video intensity, the green band control the video, green video intensity, and the blue band control the blue video intensity. And then we'll make this a two standard deviation stretch. So now we have something that looks like a color image. And it will match in the extent to our 1978 georeference photograph. And then what we want to do is we'll cut out the panchromatic band to the same extent. So to do that, we could use a copy raster tool. So take our band 8, and we'll output it to pan band 2013. And then under environments, our processing extent will be the same as our demarcation point photo, 1978. And we'll snap to our original band 8 pixels and then OK and then OK. So here's the resulting pan band. Here's our bands blue, green, red, near infrared and here's our 1978 photo. So our next step is if we look at the pan band and zoom in we have 15 meter pixels as opposed to if we look at our blue-green-red near-infrared band, that's 30 meter pixel, so it's much coarser. So what we could do is we can sharpen this true color 30 meter pixel raster using a technique called pan sharpening. So that's our next step. So we use a tool called create pan sharpening raster. So our input true color raster will be the one that has the blue, green, red, near infrared spectral bands. And the red is the third band. The first band is the blue spectral region. The second band is the green spectral region. The fourth band is the near infrared spectral region. And then our 15 meter panchromatic band is 
this raster. And then we have an option of different pan sharpening algorithms to use. And we could start using the Esri pan sharpening algorithm. And then just OK. And what that will do is create a raster that has been pan sharpened using this 15 meter pan band. Okay, so here's our original Landsat OLI image with 30 meter pixels. And then here's the pan sharpen image. So you can see you have more detail with your pan sharpen image. And you can try different algorithms to get slightly different colors. So for example, if we go back to our results and then just OK. So here's the pan sharpen image from using the intensity hue saturation algorithm and here's the one using the Esri algorithm. So some of it's just your own personal preference. But the key is now we've got a raster and the raster is in 15 meter cell size which was the same as our grayscale panchromatic image but we have color associated with our pan sharpened image. Okay your final step will be to create a polyline feature class and then edit that polyline feature class to create a coastline from the Canada Alaska border along the coastline all the way to demarcation point and then if you choose to do this mini project email me your coastline your pan sharpened raster and your geo-referenced aerial photograph from 1978 that all have been clipped out to this small area. So they're fairly small rasters.